All right, welcome back. So um, last time we talked about imaging from by mirrors. So today we'll be continuing talking about imaging, but let's take a look, a quick look on what we um, learned last time. So we look at image formed by plane mirrors. So the way to uh, visualize the images is to use the ray diagram, which you take a point from the object and then draw two rays out of that uh, point and then shine the two ray onto the plane mirror, uh, apply loss of reflection. So then you get reflected ray uh, coming into your eye. But if you back extend those two rays, they will intercept behind the mirror. Okay, so then um, the intersect of these two uh, rays uh, back extended uh, behind the mirror is where the image of the object should be. Okay, uh, we also talk about the um, image formed by spherical mirror. So uh, you have two ways to uh, make a sphere and uh, the curvature, part of the curvature of sphere as a mirror. If outside is mirrored, it's called convex mirror. If the inside of this uh, is, uh, piece is mirror, it's called a concave mirror. Um, we derive the equation, mirror equation, uh, using the ray diagram and then use the similar triangles. So it turns out that the mirror equation is one over DO plus one over DI equal to one over F. So DO is the distance from the mirror to the object and DI is the distance from the mirror to the image. F is the focal length, which is equal to one half of the uh, radius of the curvature. Okay? The magnification um, defined as the height of the image divided by the height of the object that is equal to minus also the um, distance of the uh, image divided by distance of the object. So we will be looking at the um, images formed by refraction today and then also by lenses. So we investigate the image formed by the reflection um, now, in this case, let's take a look on if um, you have an object, let's say a particular point, P, on the object, and in front of a transparent uh, material. So you can draw two rays out of that uh, point, right? So it hits on the surface of this transparent uh, material. You can apply Snell's law, which you can see um, the uh, reflect being go into this uh, second median. And this guy also hit here and then get reflected. So these two will actually intercept inside the median, okay? So there's a physical point, these two will um, meet together. So then this is the image of this point P, or if you look at uh, maybe a more uh, physical object like an arrow, um, take a look on the top of the arrow, again, draw two uh, rays, okay? Um, then you'll see that as uh, the two rays get reflect into the median, they will also intercept okay, a certain point. So then um, there's image formed by um, that transparent uh, material. So you can actually uh, kind of machine or produce the uh, transparent material so it curves up perfectly on one side and then also uh, likely maybe on the other side too. Okay? So then um, you can also use that piece uh, to um, from image by refraction. So if you do that, you get um, thin lenses, okay, so like that. So for lenses, there are uh, two types of lenses. One is called converging lenses. The other one is called diverging lenses. So for converging lenses, um, you actually have the rays come in and then they will be converged and uh, possibly meet at, on the other side of the lens. Okay? For divergent lenses, if you have rays comes in on one side of the lens, they will be divergent. So then uh, you will not have refracted rays um, meet on the other side of the lens. Okay? For each of these two types of lenses, um, the shapes can also vary. So you can do something like this. This convex meniscus, that means you have one side more curved up than the other side. Um, and then you will have just plain old convex, so just one side being curved up, okay, or double convex, so both sides are curved, uh, concave, convex in that sense. You can also have for the divergent lenses, the concave meniscus, something like this, okay? So it's, you have thin, uh, it's uh, more thick on the sides, but thinner at the middle on the other, and here you have more uh, thicker in the middle, thick, uh, thickness, more thickness here, or the middle is thicker than the other sides are thinner. And or you can also have this, okay? 
So for convergent lenses, the middle is thicker than the size. And then for divergent lenses, the, the middle is thinner than the size. Okay. So um, you can also have different shapes, um, so-called concave meniscus, plano concave, or double concave. In this uh, class, we'll focus on double convex and then also double concave. So those two are the representations of the uh, converging lenses and then for the divergent lenses respectively. Okay, so double convex for converging lens, um, double concave for divergent lens. All right. So let's take a look on the uh, double convex lenses. Okay. So if you have parallel rays to, again, um, this is through the center of the lens. So this is called, again, the central axis or principal axis of this uh, lens, which is uh, similar to the definition of the um, spherical mirrors. Okay. So if you have actually the parallel rays comes in uh, with respect to the central axis when you hit the lens, they will actually be uh, converged and um, intercept at this common point, F. This is called the focal point of the lens, okay? So a convex lens uh, like this is, um, does something similar to uh, like a two prism uh, uh, putting it in this shape. So then uh, rays can be converged, okay? So similar to that way. But in this case, you can have better focus. So they actually also merge at one point. For concave lens, so then um, the parallel ray comes in, will get reflected outward, diverge. But if you back extend those rays, they will actually merge at this, or they actually it will intercept at this point. This is the focal lens of the concave lens. Okay, so this is similar to uh, two prisons in this case. So they are um, facing. Uh, upside down on the top one and then the other one is in this uh, orientation. So the rays will be then diverged as uh, passed out of on the other side of the, the um, setup here, okay? All right, so similar to uh, mirrors, we use three principal rays for lens um, uh, lenses to form images. The P ray, these are the rays uh, parallel to the, um, the center exit. The F ray are the rays um, that is going through the focal point or appears to be coming from the um, focal point. Okay, so towards cave concave, drawn towards concave lens or through the um, convex focal point. Instead of having C rays, we now use middle point ray, M ray, that goes through the middle of the lens directly. Okay, so not deflected. So um, and this is the thin lens approximation, okay? So we are assuming the lens is thin, okay? So then you have that. All right, so let's take a look on how you actually apply the three principal rays, okay? Okay, so P ray parallel to the central exit hit on the lens will come out going through the focal point. The middle ray will go right through, okay, and deflect it. The F ray goes to the focal point, get reflected parallel to the center exit. Okay, for concave lenses, the P ray get reflected or diverged on the other side, but appears to coming uh, from this focal lens. The F ray appears to be going through this guy, get reflected parallel to this um, principal exit. Okay, the M ray go right through just like this guy. Okay, so again, you can use any of the two rays, the principal rays, to actually um, locate the image of the object okay, on the other side of the lens. Um, or, so that's for the real uh, image. For the uh, virtual image, actually, it's going to be on the same side of the lens. Okay, So you'll see that, bit. for example, this guy, right? So those meet at this point. So the, this is, they do, um, these rays do intercept, so that means you got the real image, okay? Um, on this one, so then they are diverge on the other side, so they do not actually uh, meet on the other side, but if you back extend, then they will all meet at a certain point here, okay? So then that would be the location for the image of uh, concave lens. All right, so uh, for example, 
um, like the second scenario we saw earlier, right? So you can use any two of them or you can use the third one to just kind of confirm your drawing to just make sure you have everything drawn uh, correctly. So uh, you back extend those um, rays coming out from the other end of the uh, lens. So they converge at this point. So this is the image, okay? So a virtual image upright, okay, in this case. And in this case, you'll see that because this object is um, DO, so again, DO be the distance of object to the lens, center of lens is greater than the focal lens. So it, it actually get a um, reduce the real image, okay? The, for the convex lens, so it depends on where the location of the, the object, okay? So you will get um, real image, if you are your distance of O object to the lens is greater than F, okay? You actually will get um, virtual image if DO is less than the focal lens, okay? So in this case, you can see, take a pellet P ray, okay? Then take a M ray. So these two will actually have to meet at this point when you back extend those two rays. Um, when the distance of objects to the lens is greater than the focal lens, then any of those three, they actually do meet on this end of the um, lens, the other end of lens. So this is the real image, okay? All right. So for the convex lenses, because you are able to um, for a real image, so then the focal lens is positive, okay? So F is positive for con convex lenses, so it depends on DO's distance. If DO is greater than focal lens, you get real image, okay? And the because it's real image, so the distance of image to the lens is positive, okay? So M will be negative uh, because HI will be um, like inverted, so minus. So for convex mirror uh, lens again, if you are inside or your DO is less than focal lens, you'll get a virtual image, okay? And then um, DI, uh, because image is virtual, is negative. So the uh, magnification will be uh, greater than one because you will get enlarged uh, image, okay? In the case of uh, focal lens is negative, so then you have concave um, lenses where you always get virtual image and DI will be also uh, negative, and then the magnification will be less than one, okay? All right, so let's take a look on the thin lens equation. So again, uh, you put your object on one side of the lens, so we'll uh, use convex lens, um, for example, and you get your one principal ray hit on the guy, so P ray hit on the lens and get through the uh, this um, focal lens. So then you have two triangles, this guy and this guy, okay? If you use your M ray, go right through the uh, lens. So then you have this triangle and this triangle. So these, these two are similar triangles and these two are similar triangles. So the technique to derive this equation is the same as we did uh, in the previous uh, lecture for mirror image. So you can refer to that guy, uh, that um, part of the lecture, uh, and try you can try to derive this by yourself, okay? We are not going to repeat here, but at the end, you'll get a thin lens equation as one over DO plus one over DI equal to one over F. So this is exactly the same as the mirror equation, okay? So that makes life easier. Mirror equation and thin lens equation, they are identical, okay? And the magnification, again, is HI over HO, which is minus DI over DO, okay? So the equations are exactly the same. All right, just a little bit um, summary for sign conventions for thin, thin lenses. So if you have convex lenses, which means uh, it's a conversion lens, then the focal lens is positive. If you have concave lens, it's divergent uh, lens. So then the uh, focal lens is negative. Magnification is positive for upright image, same orientation as object, okay? And then it's negative for inverted image, opposite orientation for object, okay, of the object. The image distance is positive for real image. 
is negative for virtual image, okay? Um, DO is positive for real object, and then it's negative for a uh, virtual object in case you have multiple um, lenses. And then in that case, uh, sometimes the image of a um, object could be served as the image of the second lens, etc. okay? All right, we will take a look on the example here. So this one says an object with a height of 2.54 is placed 36.3 millimeter to the left of a lens and with a focal lens of 35.0 millimeter, where is the image located? And then what's the height of the image, okay? So let's take a look. So for the equations, again, the two equations, right? Thin lens equation and then a mirror equation, they're identical. So that's the thin lens equation, magnification, HI over HO or minus DI over DO. So let's just put them down there. But let's take a look on what's given here. It says this uh, object has a height of, so that's HO in centimeters. It says this guy is placed to the left of lens. So then DO is equal to 36.3 millimeter. And it says this F is equal to 35.0 millimeter, okay? So um, at the beginning, when you guys are working on this problem, um, you probably want to draw um, a picture representing what's going on here, okay? So it says, so not necessary, this is not necessary, uh, or actually it's a convex lens because it tells us the focal lens, which is being positive, so greater than zero. So that means this is a convex lens, okay? Which is a convergent lens, okay? So in a sense, so 35 millimeter, so something like this. So for lenses, you have, um, two focal points on either side of the lens, okay? Um, I think I forgot to mention that, but um, you should uh, take a note if you don't know that, okay? So they're focal points. So it says this guy is placed somewhere 36.3. So that means a little bit bigger than this guy, right? So somewhere here, or a distance is further away from the focal point, okay? So that's your DO. DO, and then this is your F, okay? So um, take a look, um, we can take um, two of the three principal rays, right? So the first one, maybe the easy one to do is the, um, the M ray. So it goes through the center, okay? Directly like that. Okay, so that's the M ray. We can take a P ray, which is parallel to this guy. So let's do that as um, as good as we can do. Okay. So hit on that, and then that will go through this focal point. Okay. So after that, you'll go through the focal point. So it looks like. Um, so they are starting like a, a part for the part, but looks like they are converging slowly. Okay. So uh, because this is 36, 36.3, very close to the guy. So that would, that's what's going to happen. So look at these two will merge certain distance quite a way. Okay. Some, somewhere. But anyway, let's take a look on the uh, math. What's the image located? So that means we are looking for DI. Okay, so you get that di, do, and o, f, so you can find your di. One over do plus one over di equals to one over f. Okay, so then one over di equal to one over f minus one over do. So di equals to one over f minus one over do, and inverse, okay? One over 35.0 millimeter minus one over 36.3 millimeter. So that gives you 977. 
977 millimeter. Okay, so um, it's much further away. So as the, the figure shows, right, it should be uh, very far away, okay? Now on part B is asking you, what's the height of the image? Okay, so for the height of the image, then you turn to this guy, okay? So M equal to this guy and then also equal to that guy. So give, it looks like we have this one, right? Now we have this solved, we have this. So we can take this part of the equation and then solve for your HI, okay? So we can do HI over HO equals to minus DI over DO, and you are looking for HI. So HI is equal to minus DI over DO times HO. Will be minus of DI, 977 millimeter, divided by 36.3 millimeter, and times HO, which is 2.54 centimeter, okay? So your HI, then turns out to be 68.4 centimeter. Again, a much bigger than uh, the original 2.5. Okay, so somewhere uh, very far away. Okay. All right. Let's go back to the slide. So, Next, let's take a look on the um, the objects of the eye. So how um, eye actually uh, forms image, okay? So in the eye, there's this um, um, piece that acts like a lens, okay? So the fact we can see things is object that is um, through the, this type of lens and then form image um, um, ideally on the retina here then the nerve uh, takes the signal and then process that, okay? But if you are like me, like a, um, having short um, eyesight, okay? So then the image will be formed actually before the retina, but this is the case for the for a far-sighted eye, okay? Which actually focus the image further, okay? Beyond the retina. So in order to correct that, uh, you need to wear glasses, which is the con um, um, concave glasses, okay? Which actually, or in this case, the it's the convex, okay? So you should have convex because you want the image to be uh, actually on the retina, okay? So that means you need the ray to be more um, diverged, okay? So then you get con convex lenses here, okay? Um, and then if you are near sighted like me, your the image formed by the eye is before the retina. So you want to actually further diverge the two rays okay, to have the image form on the retina. So you use the concave lenses, okay, so thinner. And then uh, because of that, your image will be a little bit smaller than if you have a healthy eye, okay? All right. Another factor is, uh, when we see objects, right, near or further from away as like having different sizes, it appears to be like if the object, even though they are the same height, if they are close to us, right, then the image of, or as we see it, is bigger than if it's far away from you, right? If you see a tree, when you are close to it, if you go further away, you see the tree can actually appears to be smaller, but they are actually physically the same size. So then this is what happens, okay? When you have object that is here, uh, further away, your image is smaller. If your object is closer, then the image is actually uh, bigger, okay? So that's what you uh, see. Um, for the microscope, uh, there are actually um, two pieces of lenses. The one is called objective. The other one closer to the eye is called the eye pieces, okay? So what happens is the an object there uh, will be um, magnified by the first lens, okay? And then um, you actually, um, it will be further magnified by the second lens, okay, as you see. So then the image of the first one becomes the an object on the second lens in that sense, okay? So this is the a schematic drawing of the compound uh, microscope, all right? Um, we'll stop here for today. Um, this will be a, a short lecture, but uh, we'll come back next time, okay? See you guys, bye.